What's up ladies and gentlemen, okay guys, I will admit this was the most annoying video I've ever attempted to create. Three things. First of all, I could never get the white balance right. When you have a white tablet and a black tablet, it just doesn't work, but I finally figured it out. I put white pieces of paper on the background, but you guys don't care about that. Number two, trying to like do this in one shot was impossible, but I'm going to do it this time. I got this. And uh, number three, I'm not even going to get into Anyhow, let's go ahead and start off by talking about Android versus iOS. So iOS is, of course, Apple's awesome operating system that is for people who would love to have simplicity. And, of course, Android is for people who want to go more in-depth, customize their device, and just have more opportunities to mess with their device. So, of course, why would you rather go with one over the other? So that's what I wanted to talk about. So I thought we'd start off by talking about the devices. Some of you guys might complain that this is not running stock, but... The differences are pretty subtle and I just wanted to discuss Android and if you guys will notice, I won't really talk about TouchWiz's features, I'll rather talk about Android's features over iOS's. But we do need to get into devices, so this is of course an iPad Air first generation and if we go into general and go into about, then we can easily see that this is of course an iPad and it's a 16GB edition running iOS 8.1. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and then go into the settings in this one. So if I scroll all the way down into this one and go into about device, it will actually let me know that my device is, of course, a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. And it's running Android 4.2.2, which is not the latest version, which is Android Lollipop, but the update should come around for this soon enough. So... Where should we begin? Well, we should begin with some of the stock applications that come. And the most important stock application on any device out there is, of course, the App Store. So the Google Play Store is, of course, what runs Android. And it recently got a cool little update and looks awesome. While on the other hand, on, the, on iOS, we get ourselves just the App Store. When you open each one up, we get ourselves good old featured section. And in the Play Store, we get ourselves our featured section for that as well. But they just call it the main home screen. Android, as of me making this video, actually has more applications than good old iOS, and that mostly is because developers just know that it's much easier to make an Android application than it is to make an iOS application, mostly because iOS is good old security. So I don't know which one you care about more in that case. So of course, right here, we get ourselves our apps, games, movies and TV, music, books, and newsstand. One thing to mention is, of course, the iOS App Store is only an app store, while the Google Play Store is a place for you to play on not only your games, but for movies and TV, music, books, and newsstand. In iOS, you'd have to go into good old iTunes and get your songs and all that other good stuff. So then, of course, we get ourselves good old applications in general. So that's the main thing to consider. When you go ahead and download iOS applications, the applications are usually really smooth and work really well. However, if you guys have a tablet, then you guys probably should go with Android when it comes to applications. Mostly because of the fact that Android just happens to have a lot more applications for good old tablets. On iOS, although you may not get that weird stretched out feeling, applications simply don't look right. If you guys take a look, that's what Vine looks like. And then, of course, if you want to stretch it out a little bit, it still doesn't fill the entire screen. While on the other hand, Android does have Vine, and if I scroll over a little bit, there is Vine, and guess what? It will fill up the entire screen, and it looks really nice as well. Uh, Google has been pushing a lot for tablet developers uh, to go to not just tablet developers, but just developers in general, to go ahead and update all their applications so they work well on tablets as well as good old phones. And since they're going into the whole watch industry now, developers are working their butts off testing things on a billion devices. Next off, I want to talk about the home screen since we got through apps, and all your apps go on the good old home screen. Apple is known for simplicity, and if you guys take a look, it's simply your icons. The main functionalities of the iOS in general is of course control center, and from here you can access certain toggles. You got yourself your brightness slider, your music controls, airdrop, camera, and of course your timer. Pretty nice on a tablet, you'll get the same thing on an iPhone 6. If you scroll down, you do get yourself your notification center, and there are now notification widgets. However, the widgets aren't very effective if you ask me, they're kind of pointless. But on the iPad, the calculator widget is pretty useful. This is where Android takes a step ahead and jumps up. Android allows customization. Although it takes up a decent amount of memory, sometimes it's just really useful. For instance, if you guys take a look, I have a bunch of widgets over here. My dock is really awesome. If you're running Nova Launcher, you can actually make your dock scroll. And of course, all apps is right here instead of 
right here. So you can actually pick and choose which apps you would like on here and which apps you would like shoved into your app drawer, some of the applications that you may not use as often. On iOS, you kind of have to scroll 1 billion times just to find a certain application, as you can see I'm doing right here. Widgets are the main factor, however. If you guys take a look, I can start playing music from right there. I got Dash Clock widgets, and remember I said that the Google Play Store has everything? Well, I can download more widgets right off of there. iOS doesn't even support widgets, it would be really nice, but if you do jailbreak, that is possible. And uh, there's my Tap 2 widget, I can see all my news right here, and uh, I got myself my good old cleaning up tool. In iOS, what would I have to do if I wanted to free up RAM? Well, I'd have to go into an application, and then of course find the RAM section, clean up the RAM, and so on and so forth. So that is all of that, and uh, that also leads to customization, not just productivity. If you guys want more things along the lines of cool looking widgets, then you can go ahead and do that. A really simple thing that stands out in good old Android that doesn't stand out as much in iOS is of course animated backgrounds. Once again, you can get those off the Google Play Store as well. If you want an anima animated background in iOS, you actually have to go ahead and jailbreak, which is a pain, and uh, most people don't want to do that and risk it, risk their warranty. So of course, the only animation you get in good old iOS is that weird parallax effect that made a lot of people throw up a little while back, so I don't know if that's technically worth it. Here, however, you can go ahead and get yourself a cool uh, wallpaper of a waterfall, um, maybe your favorite cat, whatever you guys want, there's hundreds of thousands of apps out there. It's a really tiny factor, but for someone like me who likes to customize, that is important. Android does not have Control Center, however, it does have something where you simply swipe down with two fingers and it gives you a variety of toggles. You can actually go ahead and customize those toggles. That goes for all Android devices. You can also have notification widgets. As you can see, I have one right here. That actually allows me to boost my device if I simply click on that. There you go. It's a cool little animation and it works extremely well. One thing that made me make this video and uh, is the fact that there are a lot of changes in iOS that weren't there before when it came to compete against Android. If you guys take a look, iOS is just a tad bit more customizable now based on their awesome looking keyboards. I am using the stock keyboard since I've always found it to be the most useful. However, on Android, you can go ahead and download Google Keyboard, you can download FlexKey, and uh, that used to be the thing forever. Now, of course, you can go into iOS as well, go into their app store, and you can download custom keyboards from there as well. I'm not sure why Apple didn't add this feature before, but they have it now, so I can't really make these two compete. But one thing I will mention, if you guys have Android and iOS, and you guys want to use the exact same keyboard, for instance, FlexKey, now you can have the same keyboard on all six of your devices, instead of having to use different keyboards and different autocorrects on different iOSs, or just OSs in general. So that's a pretty helpful thing for all OSs out there. One very important thing is of course the lock screen, and if you guys take a look, on iOS the lock screen is very simplistic, you can't do much, unless you get notifications you can reply from right there, however if you do enable things you can go ahead and access control center and notifications directly from here, which does add some functionality, but that's not really the lock screen, that's the notification center and the control center. In truth, the, notific uh, the lock screen is just your time, your background, and a simple slide to unlock, and a passcode we'll get into in one second. However, on Android, not only can you have different lock screens that you can download once again from the Google Play Store, but you can actually have widgets built directly into the lock screen. That's right, I can go ahead and add widgets. That's not something that Samsung only has, it's what all Android devices have. So that is pretty nice. Go back, get rid of that widget, and it gets better. So not only can I have my good old animated background and my notification center right here, but I can also have good old applications that I can launch directly from there. That's something that I've always wished Apple would include, but they never did. Let me go fix that. It won't fix. Okay, there you go. So I can launch my Clash of Clans, and basically I can go into settings and set up all my favorite applications to launch whenever I go ahead and simply swipe upward just like that. It should go directly into the Google Play Store. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn on Portrait Orientation, because that is bugging me. Should have done that before the video, eh? All right, there you go. Next off, speaking of the lock screen, one thing that you don't want is random thieves or random people going and looking into your information. So of course security is key here. So we're gonna of course go ahead and jump into settings and go into the security settings. Once again, Android seems to take the win. At least it seems to, and that only rings true if you have a device that does not have Touch ID. For instance, I do not. And uh, some Android devices do have that touch capability, it's just not as good as Touch ID. But if you have the fingerprint scanner, then Apple blows the competition away. But if you don't, which most Apple devices don't, 
there's only like two or three out there that actually do, then you are kind of screwed. So what you have to do is you have to set your normal passcode and you can set two types of passcodes. One is of course your good old alphabet. So you can type in a passcode that's like, I remember my friend's passcode was ball is life and he typed that in every time until he got sick of it. Then he just went with the traditional passcode and the good old traditional passcode is of course having a normal number passcode. So if I go ahead and turn passcode on, then this is of course what will appear on my lock screen. And I used to have 7000. Most people just go with good old 000. Android takes it to the next level. And with Android 5.0, they actually improve some of the features that they, uh, they've had forever basically. So I'm gonna go into good old security if I can find it, there it is. And you can actually encrypt your device um, in real time, so that's like remotely using your device. Most people won't do that. Most people will actually go ahead and just set the normal passcode, which you do inside of your lock screen. So I'm gonna go ahead into good old lock screen. And as you can see, it asks me what type of screen lock I want. I can disable the widgets, I can disable the extra applications and all that good stuff. But this is of course the most important. So you not only get your pin passcode and your normal high security passcode like Apple includes, but you can also have a pattern like I have. You can also have face and voice which is not the best security. Yes, someone can simply go ahead and put a picture onto your screen or you could go unlock and it would recognize your voice. It's just something to show off. It's not really something that's cool. There is of course face unlock and finally just the simple swipe. And if you go ahead and download other applications off of Google Play, they've invented really creative ways to unlock your device. There's the cool little Pac-Man one and so on and so forth. So that is security wise. And the what is the verdict? If you have Touch ID, Apple wins this one, but that's not really part of the OS. But if you don't, then Samsung wins because it just has more functionality and people get pretty creative. Before you guys comment, why aren't you going into the camera and music applications? Those applications usually depend on the device. So if you have an iPhone 6 and you're comparing with the Samsung Galaxy S5, um, then it's obviously going to differ when you compare it against an HTC One M8, which is why I'm going over simply the sole factors of Android versus iOS, rather than going into like camera and all that other good stuff. So another important thing is, of course, speed. A lot of people say that Android lags, and that is mostly based on your device, as I just said, some of the things I want to be going over. But I have to admit, Android does have a lot more clunky stuff when it comes to just things in general. When you go ahead and purchase an iPhone, it's usually really clean. It comes with like the stock version of iOS. There's no random apps on there. Sure, if you go ahead and get it from Sprint, they're gonna try to install something on there, but it's mostly clean. While on the other hand, if you go ahead and get a Google device or an Android device, you're gonna get a bunch of what we like to call bloatware. As a matter of fact, I have an entire page here solely devoted to bloatware. Look at this. Galaxy apps, Samsung Link, Smart Remote, Samsung Cares, I doubt Samsung Cares, <laughs> play, play books, play movies, screensaver, um, a bunch of other random things that just came with the tablet and so speed and functionality is influenced by that. Widgets also take up a decent amount of RAM and that's why you hear that Samsung devices have good old 3 to 4 gigabytes of RAM which is ridiculous. While on the other hand, good old iOS devices maintain the same speed, but they only have one gigabyte of RAM. They simply don't need as much. iOS is just very simple. It doesn't need that kind of RAM or that kind of speed. Um, everything's snappy and just fast, just the way it is. One thing that other tech reviewers out there won't mention, but I'll go into is of course the settings themselves. I kind of find it sad that Apple does not have a power saving mode. That's right guys, when my battery is running low, guess what I do? I go ahead into my good old notifications, click on that cool little thing, and I turn off everything, and then I hit the power saving mode, which gives the uh, screen a yellowish tint, but it gives me an extra like 30 minutes of battery when I'm at two or 3%, which is awesome, and it kind of depends from device to device, but all Android devices do have the power saving mode, and in Android 5.0, it's improved, and you can actually customize what turns off, what turns on, what time they turn off, so on and so forth, to get the most out of your battery life. Apple does not include that. They just give you the cool little stamp, there's 10 hours of battery life. In truth, that's not really true. And when your battery is running low, you kind of have to either turn off your device or put in airplane mode and all those other tips and tricks. When really the cool thing would be just to click a button and have good old power saving mode. How awesome would that be? I don't know what Apple was thinking, but I'm not Apple. 
Moving on, Android always seems to have a lot more just customizing inside of the settings as well. For instance, if you go into sound, you can actually go ahead and have different types of sounds. And Apple sort of has that, but at the same time, you can't go ahead and get it. You actually have to go ahead into iTunes and download your own ringtones rather than getting them off of the App Store, Google Play Store, like good old Android. It also gives you like graphs and stats on everything, for instance, your storage. On the other hand, if you go into Apple, and about it simply gives you a cool little thing where it tells you how many gigs are available i only have 1.3 gigabytes available and that's kind of annoying and kind of sad and uh, that's just the way android and apple are different there is of course brightness and text size that's something that comes with all devices once again we just discussed power saving and battery inside a battery you can actually go ahead and see on a cool little graph what's being used up ios now has that as well it's just a little bit harder to access i actually don't even remember how to um, let me see if I could find it. Should be in here somewhere. Uh, usage. Yep, that's it. And battery usage. And then it tells you a little, cool little stats. It doesn't give you the graph, but it does tell you what's using up the most. The home and lock screen, obviously. I don't know what the heck the home and lock screen are doing to use up that much, but they are. And of course, Clash of Clans for me and a few other applications. I'm pretty happy they included that because that would be a major downfall if they did not. Wallpapers, of course, we went over, sounds, passcode, privacy. Apple does have a privacy section, and Android seems to do better when it comes to privacy since it asks you about everything. When you go ahead and download an application from the iOS App Store, guess what? You just install it. But Apple does all the security stuff. Well, on the other hand, Google doesn't want to be responsible for that. So if you go ahead and install something, Google actually literally asks you everything what the application can do, what it can access, how it can access it, when it can access it, device ID, call information, and then it forces you to hit accept before you actually go ahead and download it. That way, basically, you're responsible for the applications. And since, of course, Google has a lot more applications, they need to have something like that for everything to run smoothly. I'm really sorry if the brightness is a little weird. I did mention that at the beginning of the video. Anyhow, let's continue. Of course, we got good old iCloud, which saves all your data onto the cloud on Apple servers. Then of course it lets you go in depth on some of its default applications and as you can see it's glitching out another ios 8.1 glitch and uh, that's about it it just lets you mess around with some of the applications such as notification settings however on android things are a little bit different you not only get what you get inside of ios but you also get extra settings such as your good old battery location services which comes with ios you can customize your log screen with widgets there's of course security that we went over but there's also go find my mobile and whether you want your passcode visible then there's the cloud which comes with everything language backup and restore what account you want to backup and restore it to but of course this is where things get interesting you can actually pick and choose what things will sync what so of course do you want skype to sync do you want soundcloud do you want bind on here and all these accounts will help you out in the future on ios all this works in the background there's of course some things that are only for samsung those are kind of useless but this is what i like a lot of people don't know about this, but this is in all Android devices and it's called the developer settings. And it lets you mess around with some of the internal organs of your device. On iOS, if you wanna go ahead and mess around with those type of things, such as how fast the multitasker loads, you of course have to go ahead and jailbreak. But on Android, things are just a tad bit different. So of course here you can actually scroll down and select GPU updates, whether you want boundaries to show, whether you want your overdraw to show, here's an example. That's kind of tough, but there's an example. You can also change your animation skill and animation speed. So if you guys want something to load faster, you can of course force GPU rendering. You can change this to that. Um, there's a billion different things. You can show your CPU usage and uh, it's pretty awesome. I personally do not use all the features, but some of these can be helpful if your device is lagging and or slow. Many people might say that, oh, that's very helpful. Others might say that, well, oh, that's way too much. I don't have time for that. I just want a simple set of settings that I can easily access and figure out in less than 10 minutes. It really is up to you guys. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about is multitasking. The multitask switcher on iOS looks a tad bit like that. When you go ahead and you swipe upward, it goes away. Well, on Samsung, it looks like this. And on most Android devices, it looks like this. One downside to the multitasker on iOS is the fact that you can't close all the applications at once. You can do the two finger thing, but that's kind of annoying as well. Since you have to go through and if you have a lot of applications open, you sort of have to go through and swipe all of them up one after another. On Android, however, you don't need to do that. You can simply click that little cool little button and all of them will disappear just like that. Say your device still isn't fast enough, from here you directly can go into the task manager 
and turn off any applications that are running in the background. It'll tell you how much they're running and uh, whether they're wasting space. So I just turned that off. There's also the RAM manager, so clear memory. Just like that. And it actually gives you help, storage, and uh, that pretty nice as a matter of fact. So let me go ahead and close out some of these applications. Another thing that sparked up recently is of course voice. So of course, when you go ahead and you say, okay, Google, then Google now will launch. I'm gonna try the traditional way since uh, that's, how, uh, that's how you compare it to Apple. And if you go ahead and hold this down, it will launch Siri. There's good old Siri and it's actually listening to whatever I'm saying right now and it's picking up terribly wrong. Uh, that's definitely what I'm saying. Nope, it got the terribly wrong. All right, so while that picks up whatever it's trying to pick up, we're going to go over and talk about the two over here. So, of course, Siri actually talks back to you. Google technically doesn't really talk back to you, but it does track like what you do and what you search on a daily basis. It'll do that anyway, but here you'll actually get like a recap of what you do, what stocks you're interested in. As you can see, I'm interested in Android. So, of course, it gives me cool little stuff, the weather in uh, good old my city. And of course, not to mention, we got ourselves a few other things such as sports and anything you want customized. You can actually go, okay, Google, and then search whatever you want. Search. And it'll go ahead and search for that. You can go ahead and check images and it's really fast and intuitive. And if you guys have ever looked into the smartwatches, that right there is what's shoved into those smartwatches. Siri works very similarly. You can launch apps using Siri and it gives you a cool little recap right here of what you can do. You can FaceTime people, you can launch certain applications, message people, calendars. Siri isn't something that people use a lot. It's kind of annoying when it picks up the wrong thing. And Google is something that people use a lot. Since people just want to search things and look up their cool little images. I believe you can do that on Siri now too, but still people just don't. Let me go ahead and try this. All right, so we're gonna try both of them. See which one's faster. Okay, Google. How fast is an iPhone 6? So Google was way faster. Um, Siri is decently fast, but of course Google is the search engine, so obviously they gotta have that nice speeded search rather than Apple who's trying to get information from like a billion different search results. Search engines, sorry. So this was really in depth and this is not really made for people's entertainment, I'm sorry to say guys. This video was mostly made for you guys who are truly looking to go into either Android or iOS and just can't seem to make the decision. Or if you guys are switching from Android to iOS and you guys want an in-depth look into the world of iOS or into the world of Android, then feel free to go ahead and like this video because that's what it was made for. One thing, however, on the side note that I want to mention is you can hack into both of these devices. There is, of course, jailbreak, which I've done. And then for Android, there's rooting, both of which have their advantages, both have their disadvantages, for instance, breaking your device. But for now, I just wanted to go over the two differences and similarities. If you're interested in any of that stuff, feel free to go ahead and check out some of my other videos. And uh, that's basically it. So what's my final verdict? Well, go with iOS if you guys like simplicity. If you guys like interacting with everyone since it does have iMessage and a lot more people tend to carry iPhones nowadays even though Apple's being hated on. And finally, if you guys simply want that nice multitasking speed since everything is just really easy to click and easy to go to. However, if you guys want sole customization and you guys want to go really in depth into the settings and make your device yours as people would say, then of course go with Android. Also, if you guys want to go ahead and change everything up and don't want to be constricted by Apple's good old rules, then of course Android is also the world for you, aka animated backgrounds, cool widgets, um, free apps, so on and so forth. In fact, Google Play is so cool, you can actually go ahead and install app stores. That's right, whole app stores directly from Google Play. So there's, there's a lot into there. I truly hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took a lot of effort and I'm sorry if the quality wasn't the world's best, but I really wanted to get some information across to you guys. Once again, this video was aimed towards the people who are really contemplating where to get iOS or Android and not necessarily for people who want extremely awesome looking vids. If you do want extremely awesome looking vids, you won't see much of these vids on my channel. I make them like once a year. So feel free to subscribe and I'll be getting more unboxings and reviews and app reviews and all that good stuff to you guys ASAP. Thank you for watching. Please like this video. This is going to be me. To add another entry for the iPad Air I'm giving away on Friday-ish, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment below. 
that's going to get you another entry.